What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 107. We start today just off on the back of back-to-back -back wins against Lazio and Spezia by the same scoreline of three goals to nil by heading in to the first leg of our Champions League last 16 knockout tie against Barcelona, the Catalan Giants, who right now lead the league in La Liga by six points clear of Atletico and they're seven clear of third place as well. And I mentioned before, you know, when the tie was drawn, as we know this season, Barcelona have had their difficulties, the financial problems in the summer. It's the post-Messi era, he living to Paris Saint-Germain, his dynasty there and his time at Barcelona uh, coming to an end in the summer. We saw Sergio Aguero on Unfortunately, retired just a few days ago. How sad was that? Forced into retirement through injury, but what a legacy he has left. A real icon of the game, Sergio Aguero. Best of luck in retirement. But I've mentioned it before, despite the struggles that they might have endured in real life, no such problems for Xavi's Barcelona in the game. Leading the way in the race for La Liga and right now in the Champions League knockout stage as well. A brilliant team. Quite a few English players there. You know, Mason Mount, Kyle Walker, Joe Gomez couple others as well but taking them on away the Catalan Giants at the new camp for the first leg with us being in great form right now save file problems or not I was super excited for this one we knocked them out with Brentford on our way to winning the Champions League back in season five I was thinking can we do it again well, heading into the game, just five minutes in, we took the early lead. Just like we've been doing all season long, we discussed this in the last episode, right from the first whistle, being in attack mode, being on it. I really feel like instead of just, you know, easing myself into games gradually, this season I'm being full throttle and we're reaping the benefits of it. Timmermans, who has been unreal this season, gives us the early lead and makes it 1-0. And after a brilliant start, the game died down. There was nothing else to report in the first half until 12 minutes after the restart, well, I knew if Barca were going to get a goal, it was going to be one or two players, Poado or Timo Werner. We sold them both as soon as we joined AC Milan to Barcelona, and it was a German striker that gave Barca their level up. I knew it was going to happen, man. I knew it. We sold him straight away to make room for Roberto Gutierrez. The German comes back to haunt me. Barca won, AC Milan won, but despite them finding their level up, I still felt we were the better team in this game. 66 minutes in, got ourselves deserving back in front. Great little 1-2 fed through Callum hudson Adoy, and I keep on talking about it. Messi's region who started on the left in this game. The only position, the only player I could think he could take out in this team is Callum. But Callum's done nothing wrong, including right there. Smacks the ball in, restores our lead. It's 2-1. Been an absolute thriller of a second half. 18 minutes to go. Frankie de Jong still at Barca. 91, 92 overall. I think he is now. Goodness gracious me incredible incredible talent as we know and puts Barca back on level terms for the second time in the game so twice we surrendered a one goal lead Barca were exploiting my fragile defense and with 12 and a half minutes to go Timo Werner does it again Barca free Milan 2 and I was thinking, do you know what? This wouldn't be a disastrous result. It wouldn't mean our unbeaten run comes to an end, but it's not terrible. We'll go back to the San Siro, only being one goal down. It won't be over. But Roberto said, son, that we are not losing tonight at the Catalan Giants. No way. He was quiet all game long. They've done such a great job at shutting him down. But once he got the one chance, I couldn't miss. Smacks it in. It's 3-3. And in crazy late drama at the new Camp. Oh! <laughs> Roberto! Gutierrez! It's one of the goals of the series! And it's 4-3, and I swear I was going absolutely ballistic when this happened. It just fired in the leveller, we just made it 3-3, we were taking the draw back to the San Siro, and then the goal machine produces a moment of magic. Oh my goodness, he's the leader, he's the captain, he's the hero, Roberto Gutierrez personifies the Docs cult hero tag. Oh my goodness. An iconic closeout to a thriller at the new Camp. We thought we'd lost it after Timo Werner's late goal. Put Barca in front for the first time. But Gutierrez does what any Docs hero needs to do. Pulls out something special at the death. 
first the leveler, the great first touch and finish, but the second goal, something special. Stanley Young's thrown in, only half dealt with, and that was a moment to remember from Roberto. So we take back a lead and not a trail Heading back to the San Siro, that seems so unlikely with 10 minutes to go, but Gutierrez turning the game on its head, my god. It really was a moment to remember in this series. I was going ballistic when it happened, man. I could not believe it. But that's what the greats do. That's what the cult heroes do. I swear, man, since we left Ivan Tony and Brentford, Gutierrez has taken his game to another level. And in that game there... He showed exactly what he's capable of. He's the main man. And following that, Juventus here. Serie A, huge game in the race for the title. As we know, Juve had that seven-point gap. Then, of course, after the save file issues, I gave myself a two-point penalty, uh, which meant the gap was cut to five. Heading into this game, Roberto Gutierrez straight away. His first shot of the game results in a goal for goal number 24. And by the way, I briefly touched on it in the last episode. I did check. I actually gave Gutierrez a one-goal penalty as well in his race for the Serie A golden boot record uh, which just stands at 36 at the moment so yeah I've actually given Gutierrez a goal penalty in this save file now but even so if anyone's capable of making up the ground it's definitely our number nine so yeah taking on Juventus Roberto scores our opening goal of the game if you remember in Turin we lost the game 2-0 and I was shocking I was absolutely terrible I was determined to make sure we wouldn't have back-to-back -back losses against Juve that could have dire consequences especially as in the Serie A goes head-to-head -head before goal difference so taking on the old lady here we had ourselves the one goal lead but you've had a couple of golden chances towards the end mike made an incredible save and then did it again a minute of normal time to go lang fires one towards the near post and mike makes an extraordinary stop to keep it at one nil in a game where once again he proved his worth in waiting goal mike this season i keep on talking about it our, you know our best our best asset is what we got on the offensive end, our deadly front four, and how good they are when going forward. But Mike, on the other end this season, has been a level above where he was last year. That big save ensured we'd hold on to the three points. Roberto's early goal gives us the victory. Final score, Milan 1, Juve 0. And whilst they'll end up with a better head-to-head -head record than us, because they scored one more goal more in Turin, they won the reverse fixture 2-0, we won this fixture 1-0. It does mean, most importantly, that after we taste the defeat against them away in Turin, that was our only loss of the season, it remains that way. Big victory there, and that now puts us eight points clear of Juve with 12 games to go. Once again, a reminder, whilst the goal difference is far superior, and I mean far superior, plus 31, it counts for nothing now. Juve have the better head-to-head -head record because they won the reverse fixture 2-0. We won that one 1-0. So the eight-point gap is good, but we know we need to be at least one point clear come the end of the season if we are to be champions. We finish level on points, Juve will win the crown and their second Serie A in three years. Hopefully, however, on what has been an amazing run of form, it doesn't come to that. We've now got the eight point gap, 12 games to go. And that means, again, if we win 10 of our remaining 12, easier said than done, but win our remaining 10 of 12, we will be Serie A champions. One thing's for sure that we are going to the Coppa Italia final. We won the first leg of the semi at the San Siro by five goals to two. And I've got to be honest, guys, you would have seen the stats here. In the second leg in Naples at the Stadio San Paolo, I just played for the nil-nil. I had a few starters out there, don't get me wrong, but the game in the Serie A on the weekend was far more important as right now, of course, we're chasing that Serie A title. I just played for the goal destroyer in the second leg. There were no noteworthy highlights. And there you go. We are back in the Coppa Italia final and it's going to be Fiorentina, which is... A little bit bittersweet because we've had so many great battles with Fiorentina over the years, both with Brentford and with Milan as well. Last year, not to make the Coppa Italia semi finals to reach the final. This year, we reached the final, but it's just a bit interesting because, as you remember, it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be Fiorentina. Like, Fiorentina shouldn't be here. They were knocked out in the quarterfinals. I think it was by Genoa, funnily enough. But, of course, used to save file issues, they managed to replay their tight. Maybe Genoa fielded some ineligible players, for example. I don't know. I, I don't know why, but they were, they were knocked out that way. But Fiorentina into the final. They shouldn't even be here, you know? <laughs> but even so, it's Fiorentina in the Coppa Italia final. To be fair, that's going to be really tough because we've had some really great battles with Fiorentina over the years, both in the Serie A, the Coppa Italia, and also in the Europa League with Brentford as well. So bring him on, the lads from Florence in the Coppa Italia final. But like I mentioned, after Juve and Inter fell at the first hurdle back in the round of 16, 
well, we became firm favourites back then and we're still firm favourites now. If we don't win that and our first domestic honour of the save, well, I would have bottled it, no doubt about that. So, following game, fourth and fifth, uh, fourth and fifth one today, sorry, Sampdoria away from home, took the very early lead for Roberto, still going for that Serie A goal scoring record despite the one goal penalty I've given on him after the save file issues. And then Timmermans got our second as well after Sampdoria drew level. In the second half, not much to report really after three goals in the first half, very little going on. We had a golden chance to make it 3 1, get the two goal cushion, and we would as well. Great little team build up, saw Timmermans roll through Gutierrez, our star duo this season. Season and the top two scorers in the league as well. I've mentioned it a few times and I'll say it once again. Whilst Gutierrez bagged the brace, Timmermans this season as a right-hand man has been un. Believable. The Belgian this year, I said he was going to come of age this season, and he definitely has. I think he's now got 20 goals in the Serie A. So whilst Roberto's going for that goal-scoring record in the Golden Boot as well, Elias is not far behind him. He's been incredible this year, Timmermans, and I'm loving him turn from boy to man in our second year with AC Milan. So for the fifth and final game of today's episode, aiming to stay clear of Juve and keep the winning run going. Uh, Torino, the lads from Turin, coming to take us on. Uh, started the game off really poorly. You know, I talk about how I won early leads this season. This was one of those games where I just didn't really get going. We had one chance, a good save, kept it at 0-0, and then 43 minutes in, another great save by Milinkovic Savage ensured the score was still scored. Us. We were getting chances, but my finishing touch just wasn't there. But 10 minutes after the restart, a golden chance to finally take the lead. I thought, you know what? I've got to be a bit more smarter and concise with my passing. And 56 minutes in after Fernandez's cross, he's only half dealt with. He picks it back up. The shot was blocked. Timmermans to Revela. Revela to Sailmakers. Sailmakers to Gutierrez. And Rob yet another in what was a glorious little team goal. Yeah, I do find it hard to play nice, intricate, smart passing moves inside or just around the edge of the area. I don't know why, but I find it very hard to do. One pass always seems to be under or over hit, but this was brilliant. Oh yeah, lovely flick, lovely back heel, and a lovely finish from Roberto for goal number one in the game and goal number 27 in 28. He should be on 28. He'll remind me of that if you feel sh fall short of the record, but it's 27 for Roberto. He's nine away from getting to the record and 10 away from setting a new one. Can he do that in 10 games? Yeah, he might have had a penalty, but I still believe in Rob. But most importantly, after the big win, our winning run continues. And to see the Serie A table here, 10 games to go, 10 points clear of Juve now, and 15 points clear of the holders Inter as well. As we know, it's now 7 wins in 10. That's all we'll need, and we'll be Serie A champions. Don't bond it now, we're almost there. But that will end today's episode of Karima, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the thriller. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career mode.